Ooh, ooh. Ah, let me get this. There we go. There we go. Ooh, ooh. Try again. Big fish ish. Man, y'all know what it is. So I'm excited because uh, just started reading a new book. Just started reading a new book. There were a lot of connections and signs and alignment that led me to this book, Think and Grow Rich um, by Napoleon Hill. And it has connections to Andrew Carnegie's book, uh, which is how to, in, how to Win and Influence Friends. Um, and I think that's the name of the book. I may be getting it wrong. But Andrew Carnegie's book is amazing. And apparently Napoleon Hill learned from Andrew Carnegie. So he's sharing with us the secret to accomplishing anything great, um, to catching up to your dreams, to getting in life everything that you desire. And I wanted to just touch on the first two top, the first two chapters because I'm reading it. And to be totally honest, this is probably the case with most people that read the book, but you start to realize certain stuff that you've done in your life in areas that you've been successful. And what this book provides is validation. You know, you had the evidence that you went through in life and shout out to my boy, G Mitch. Uh, he's got me running in some, he got me, he got me competing back competing athletically. I got to touch on that with y'all too on Saturday, but G Mitch, he shared something with my brother and I, and the takeaway that I had from it was that confidence is simply a result of evidence. Work to build the evidence, and then the confidence will come. The evidence of things, that's the proof. That's the proof that we're great. You want confidence to walk around that you're great? Do great things. And to do great things, you got to do the little stuff. You got to be consistent. You got to be disciplined. You got to be focused. You got to sacrifice all these different things. That's going to build the evidence that is then going to turn into confidence um, in yourself. So there's a lot of connections to be made. Um, so this book definitely validated a lot of the evidence that I've seen in areas, not only in which I've been successful, but other areas in which I haven't been successful, uh, because the same rule applies to both. Um, and I'm not going to share with y'all the exact rule because I got to get through the book first and they don't just come out and just tell you it. Um, however, I've picked up on it. I've picked up on it. I have it in my head. I understand it. Um, but like the book said, it's better when you just pick it up um, as you go through rather than them just coming out and saying like, hey, this is the rule the impact won't be the same, all right? You gotta, you gotta sacrifice. It's like paying for something. You gotta you know, pay your dues in order to get that return. So Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. The first chapter is just an introduction, but the second chapter is on desire. And in the first two chapters, they focused on a story that actually led, that I was told. I didn't know that it was from this book, and maybe it's a well-known story, but it's something that, uh, Michael Pinball Clemens told us in college uh, before our UVA game, the start to our senior season. And he was telling us this story about this warrior that, or general, you know, army leader, was getting ready to go to battle. And their army was a lot smaller than the army that they were facing. And they had to go on enemy territory to fight the battle. So they took the boats to the enemy's land and I guess normally you would leave the boats there, you know, just in case you need to retreat, just in case you, you know, uh, change your mind and want to get back home, whatever it may be. And <laughs> Pinball told us, you know, I'm kind of giving the story both from the book and what Pinball told us. And he said, you know, you get to a certain point where when you only see winning as an option, then that's what you'll get. When you're willing to risk everything in order to win and you have the desire and that's, those are the only thoughts that we have in our head because thoughts become actions, right? Then what you think, what you believe, if you believe it enough, is going to happen. So for this army leader, he knew that it was important for him to get his troops 
get his army in the best mental headspace. And you've actually seen something similar in Gladiator, but let me stick here. Let me stick here. So what he decided to do was he made an order to burn all the boats, to burn all the boats that they just took to enemy territory, to burn them all. And he let his, his troops know that they're either going to die or they're taking over this land. They're either going to win or they're going to die. There's no other option. There's no, there's no option for retreat. And when you remove that option for retreat, what you did was when you're going into battle or when you're getting ready to compete, you always have the thought in your head, well, okay, well, some of us may have the thought in our head that, or that tries to creep in our head, which, well, if we do lose, you know, what's the, what's the exit plan, right? You know, if I do lose, how can I, you know, still walk away as whole as possible? He removed all of that. So the only focus was to put any and everything, all the focus, discipline, determination, desire, put it all into we are conquering this army and this is our new home. Period. Now think about the mindset of the people defending their homes. Don't know what it was, but I'm sure, you know, they had proper motivation to defend However, when you get to a point where, as I said, you have no, there's no other thoughts in your head besides, like, you know that there's only one option. There's only one option to win. Other than that, you die. That's, that's a fight that not many people want to take on. That's a fight that not many people want to take on. And when they burned the boats, they ended up, you know, winning the battle, you know, conquering that army. And the story... The story, uh, it, I guess why it hits home maybe for me is because when Pinball told us that story before the UVA game, um, it just gave us a mindset like, yo, like this is, like we're not losing this game. We're not losing this game. We're willing to risk any and everything. They don't want it as bad as us. We're coming to their crib and we're taking their shit, period. That was the energy. We're coming to their crib and we're taking their shit. So hide your kids, hide your women, like we could, and that was the energy. That was the energy that everybody bought into. And when you get everybody to buy into the same goal, when you just get one individual to buy into one goal, to really be bought in like this is the only option, this is going to happen, that's powerful. Now imagine when you get an entire team to buy in. That takes things to another level. That takes things to an entirely another level. Uh, we always talk about compounding, right? Compounding. Imagine uh, the, the, the compounding interest that comes when everybody buys in. So the main takeaway from these chapters were desire and the fact that there's no such thing as impossible. Um, he said that, you know, he bought a dictionary and the first thing that he did was cut out the word impossible in it. And he recommended that we all do the same, too. And I get it. I get it. He's talking my language. I get it. Because when you're fully committed to something and when you really know. Before the commitment, when you know that you can accomplish anything, anything. then all you need to do is apply that mindset to whatever plan or task you're looking to accomplish. And once we do that and we have it in us to sacrifice whatever it takes to accomplish that particular goal to win, it's done. It's already done. It's already happening. Now we just got to see it happen. In, in real life, because we've already seen it happen up here. We've already planned it. We already got everything that we know that we need. We know that we're willing to sacrifice. We kn everything is done. It's like how you always talk about, not how you always, how I always talk about, I guess, with sports, but you always hear um, the greats talking about the games are easy. You know, the practices, the preparation, that's what's difficult. The games are easy. 
the games are easy and all this stuff, it, it all kind of plays around the same principle that if desire determines everything, desire, will, grit, hunger, de determination, all these different things, that determines everything. And a lot of times we put ceilings over our head, um, both literally <laughs> and metaphorically, that prevent us from growing. It's like the plant. You know, you put the plant in a bigger pot, it's going to grow bigger. If you put the fish in a bigger tank, it's going to grow bigger. If you put the human in a more positive environment, it's going to grow better. But what, what decides whether or not we're going to accomplish something great or, or whether or not we'll just be a failure and stop when things get hard? Uh, because there's another story that maybe I'll touch on later on as far as, you know, he was highlighting, you know, how most of the people that a lot of the success, most successful people in the world, um, they all talk about they achieved their greatest success, that moment came right after perhaps one of their greatest temporary failures or losses. An opportunity brewed out of that. And they just had the will, the desire, the strength to just keep pushing. So a lot of times we're looking for, you know, a secret formula. Um, but we have it. We have it. And it all starts with desire. It all starts with desire. So just wanted to share that with y'all. Um, remember Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Hopefully it's in the camera. Um, and if you guys want to pick it up, then I'm going to pretty much, I'm going to be giving y'all some feedback as I go through the book. They recommended reading a chapter every, uh, every day. Uh, that's, that's a, I got to move faster than that. And I'm actually, I'm listening to the audible, the audio book, while I'm reading it. So I'm going back and forth. I need to get both. While I'm in the car, I need to be hearing it. Then I go back and make sure that I'm reading everything that I listen to because I want this to sit with me. I want this to, to, I, I want this to, to open up a lot of doors in my brain that are going to get me where I know I'm going. So with that, I'll let y'all rock. Um, think and grow rich. Thoughts. Be careful what you're thinking about, because like I said, it doesn't only work on the positive side. It can work with negative thoughts as well. So y'all have a great day. Uh, make this the best day yet. Make this the best day yet. Make this the greatest week ever. And let's just win. Let's just win. Let's build evidence so that way we can move around with confidence. All right? I'll talk to y'all soon. Ooh.